One of the new findings that's revealed by the Senate report today is that Konstantin Kalimnik, um, the Senate finds, was not just someone linked to Russian intelligence, but was a Russian agent himself. This is a partner of the campaign chairman, um, Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign chairman. Uh, and so here you have Paul Manafort, the chairman, secretly meeting with a Russian intelligence agent, providing that agent internal campaign polling data while that agent's country, Russia, is engaged in a social media campaign to denigrate Hillary Clinton and help elect Donald Trump. Adam Schiff there, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, talking about the explosive report that was issued by the Republican-led Senate providing new and damning information about the Trump campaign's contact with Russia in the 2016 campaign. Now, Schiff, I think, did a pretty good job spelling out some of the more disturbing details. And he didn't even mention WikiLeaks or Roger Stone and how the Senate Intel Committee connected the dots between Stone, Donald Trump, and the Russians, and the releasing of damaging Democratic emails right before the election. Let's bring in now our guests to discuss that, Steve Bannon's arrest, and much more. Harry Littman, former federal prosecutor, is also a top DOJ official during the Clinton administration. And I guess, uh, Harry, let me just start there, which is when we saw the Senate report um, confirming a lot of uh, the worst suspicions about not only Russian meddling, but some even coordination, Walk me through, in a normal administration, in a normal Department of Justice, where would it go next from there? I think everybody just took it as a fait accompli. Okay, uh, I thought that might have happened. Now it did, but it's going to now die on the vine. Where normally would something like that go? Yeah, there's a very strange dynamic that we've had to this whole thing where there, there have been reports, and as each uh, successive revelation has come out, it's sort of confirmed the worst, and yet the sting somehow has been taken out uh, by its having been reported before and then Trump's own kind of braggadocio and, and Teflon status. These, the, What they're documenting are certainly crimes. You can't in any way consort or take aid from a foreign country uh, for an election. And for one vivid example, the report really fills in the picture with respect to Manafort when he's campaign manager and Konstantin Kalimnik, a name we've heard, but whom we now know is completely part of Russian intelligence. So all those contacts would, would give rise to potential crimes. It still would be first and foremost, it seems to me, in normal days, a political scandal, a scandal of a knowing uh, acceptance of help and even, remember that old word, collusion with a foreign country that would call for a political response, but many individual crimes as well, uh, especially obstruction and conspiracy to accept foreign aid and, uh, and influence an election. Let's get to a couple of developments this week, uh, starting off uh, uh, with the arrest of Steve Bannon. Um, usually, Trump throws his arms around um, uh, those uh, close to him when they get in trouble. Um, in this case, uh, he threw Bannon under the bus. To that end, um, the folks at the SDNY, do you think um, that they certainly have leverage, it looks at least on the face, that it's you know somewhat indisputable facts um, for fraud that they've got Bannon on, they got leverage, it would seem to me, that if Bannon wants to cooperate and he has something to share, this could go beyond just the fraud. Am I misreading that? You know, I don't think you are, and you would think he certainly does have material. It's so funny, the pattern, you know, we saw with, with Michael Cohen and we saw in, in different ways with Manafort. The first move is always, oh, barely know the guy, you know, passed him once. and But Bannon, we think of as if there's any kind of you know, Rasputin or Swami to the construction of Trump the candidate for, out of Trump the businessman. It, that is the architecture of Steve Bannon. So he does seem to be pretty cavalier in distancing himself. And as you say, it's it's quite an obvious move if the if he has the goods to try to get him to cooperate. And that's definitely in the mindset of SDNY. Next to the Trump uh, taxes, uh, the court ruling, and now they'll inevitably be uh, the appeal. But um, 
Where do you think on a timetable uh, this is um, in terms of, is this going to go back to the Supreme Court? Um, what kind of timetable do you think Vance is working on here? Yeah, I think my best expectation is first the Second Circuit and then the Supreme Court will, in quick order, turn down uh, any kind of effort by Trump for further process. And that pro that could run, you know, very quick in the legal system is a couple months. Now, of course, at that time, they still remain protected by grand jury secrecy. But, you know, things have a way of leaking. Yes, they do. Um, you know, earlier in the hour, Harry spoke to an election expert um, as to, you know, what the next some, some odd days might hold and then what may or may not happen on November 3rd. But the president said he's going to now have law enforcement at polling places. Um, forgetting for the moment about the integrity of the election, legally, what can the president do and not do as it relates to compromising um, a person's constitutional right to vote? Well, we're going to find out because election season is turning into already litigation season. You know, there's a funny record here because normally a president would have some kind of good argument and maybe would, in fact, be, be uh, interested in protecting the franchise. We know, you know, beyond dispute that Trump is interested in suppressing the franchise, at least certain uh, voters. So that kind of record will be presented to the courts who normally are loath to second guess the president in that way. But, you know, no mistake about it. This is, this is you know, dirty business trying to anybody who might have had a scrape with the law, who might worry about uh, getting picked up is going to be deterred from voting. These are not your friendly police officers now trying to help everybody vote. This is, you know, ominous and, and designed to uh, have the long arm of the law as a suppressing force. Finally, Harry, um, a lot of this doesn't make any sense, but one thing for the life of me I still can't figure out, bar. A lot of lightweights um, have populated this administration, and they really haven't had anything to lose, including reputationally. But Barr had a real career. Uh, he had a real reputation. Forget about ideologically. Why would he do what he's done to that reputation the last couple of years and seemingly willing to even do now with this coming election? Uh, again, he had something to lose. And he did it for Trump. I still don't get the why. I mean, the short answer is you and me both. Remember, I had worked with him, and I uh, actually championed his nomination. And as you say, he dove completely in the tank for Trump once he arrived. I mean, you know, I think it's clear that he is a strong Republican and wants Republicans to win, but he was also that in 1991 when uh, the, when Father Bush was in a tight race that he is, that he lost, and he didn't put his thumbs on the scales in the same way, he he went south far and fast, and we're still piecing together why. But it's true that he's lost the benefit of the of the doubt, and now is someone you have to worry about safeguarding against. Terrible shame. Absolutely, Harry Lippman. Always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Good to talk to you. And up next, we're going to take you back to the convention that was. The last four days, we'll hear from the Bidens, the Obamas, Kamala Harris, also some more of the more emotional moments. That up next.